Okay, we're going to move on to part 151. This is line 18A3Z2A5. NFTX lithium PFC coatings density graphite plasma HEF UFO 5G well SETI. Again, this should have a formula in it. There's the alien radio signal. We're going to go over some of the terminology that comes up in these PDF files. And with the PDF files, they are new inventions and new patents and new things that you can use with your technology, okay? So this is the effect of lithium PFC coatings on STX density control. Um, these are all the authors for this particular article. And it looks like it was posted in June 2007, okay? Again, this is going to go up on the blog post. When I do the links and stuff, you'll be able to read it there. So lithium coatings on the graphite plasma facing components PFCS and STX are being investigated as a tool for density profile control and reducing the recycling of hydrogen isotopes. Repeated lithium pellet injection into center stack limited and lower single null ohmic Ohmic helium discharges were used to coat graphite surfaces that had been preconditioned with ohmic, sorry, I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, helium discharges of the same shape to reduce their contribution to hydrogen isotope recycling. The following deuterium, de deuterium the NBI reference discharges exhibited a reduction in density by a factor of about three for limited and two for diverted plasmas, respectively and peaked density profiles. Recently, a lithium evaporator has been used to apply thin coatings on conditioned and unconditioned P PFCS. PFC, yeah, CS, I said it too fast. Effects on the plasma density and the impurities were obtained by preconditioning the PFCs with ohmic helium discharges and performing the first deuterium MBI discharge as soon as possible after applying the lithium coating. And that's from 2007 from Elsevier BV and that's at www.journals.elsevier.com. Okay and here's a graph showing what he's talking about. Here's the NSTX. I'm not sure if it's the exact experiment but this is what I found on Google when I did the images. Okay. This just gives you a rough idea what I'm looking at. It gives me a rough idea what I'm looking at. So it says locking here. Um, I really have no idea what these graphs mean. I'm sure you guys do. Okay. So we'll go on to the next PDF file that came up. Um, the next one that came up was from Nuclear Fu Fusion, Volume 52, Number, Chikrina Alert, blah, blah, blah. John Kai Park at 2012. So this is brand new. Um, sensitivity to error fields in NSTX high B plasmas. Here's all the authors here for this blog post. Or PDF, sorry. Again, these PDFs are, you can purchase them, so you just go to their website and you can buy them from them. Say hi. <laughs> Tell them you saw it in my video. Okay, it was found that error field threshold decreases for high B and NSTX, although the density correlation in conventional threshold scaling implies the threshold would increase since higher B plasmas in our study have higher plasma density. This greater sensitivity to error field in higher B plasmas, I'm hoping that is a B, I'm not sure if it is, but if it isn't, let me know, okay? In higher B plasmas is due to error field amplification by plasmas. When the effect of, of amplification is included with ideal plasma responsible response calculations, the conventional density correlation can be restored and threshold scaling becomes more consistent with low B plasmas. However, it was also found that the threshold can be significantly changed depending on plasma rotation. When plasma rotation was reduced by non-resonant magnetic breaking, the further increases in sensitivity to air field was observed. And that was received January, uh, September 2011, but posted January 12, 2012. 
and it's iopscience.iop.org. And I found a graph to look at this one. It says deuterium energetic icon spectrum. And there's the calculations for it. There's the energy. KEV. Time. And again, this is on Google. This came up on Google when I Googled it. So we'll go on to the next PDF. It's called Nuclear F Fusion Volume 52 from SS Medley at AL 12, 2012. It's called The Investigation of a Transient Energetic Charge Exchange Flux Enhancement Spike on Tail Observed in Neutral Beam Heated H-Mode Discharges in the National Spherical Taurus Experiment. And here's all the authors of this article. Lots and lots of them. Okay. Okay, so the abstract is, In the National Spherical Tours Experiment, NSTX, a large increase in the charge exchange neutral flux localized around the neutral beam NB injection full energy is measured using a neutral particle analyzer. Term the high energy feature HEF, well, that's what HEF stands for. Okay, I kept seeing HEF and I didn't know what it meant. It appears on the NB injected energetic ion spectrum only in discharges while, where tearing or kink type modes of that are absent. Toroidal uh, elfin egg mode activity is weak in global elfin egg mode. J GAE activity F 400 to 1000 1, kilohertz is robust. Compressional el elfin, elfin egg mode activity, okay, another calculation is usually sporadic or absent during the HEF event. The HEF exhibits growth times of that, duration spanning that, and peak to base flux rotations up to this. And in frequent cases, a slowing down distribution below the HEF energy can develop that continues to evolve over periods of over 100 mls. A time scale long cap compared with the typical fast ion equilibration times. HEFs are observed only in H mode, not L mode. Discharges with injected power of that. And in the pitch range, there we go, a lot of terminology here, only for passing particles. Increases of order is 10 to 30 percent in the measured neutron field and total scored energy that are observed to coincide with the feature appear to be driven by concomitant broadening of measured this and that and that and this and that. While the HEF has minimal impact on plasma performance, it nevertheless poses a challenge, challenging wave. Particle interaction phenomena to understand, candidate mechanisms for HEF formation are developed based on quasi-linear QL theory of wave-particle interaction. The only mechanism found to lead to the large NPA flux ratios, which is that, observed in this, and this evolution of the energetic ion distribution is that in phase space. A concomitant loss of some particles is observed due to the interaction through cyclotron resonance of the particles with destabilized modes having sufficiently high frequencies. And that's it there. In the plasma frame that are tentatively identified as GAEs. Okay, that's a footnote. I had a little graph over here. Something. I don't know what this is. Frequency and time, it says. That's all I've got there. I don't know what this is at all. I lost its footnote. I'm sorry. It's a pretty picture. I like the colors. So we'll go on to the next thing, which is my thoughts. Okay, February 21st my thoughts. I was looking for images for the latest technology, and this conference meeting came up. They must be important to one another. December 2011 or January 2012, ITPA Diverter and SOL 
PSI Selection Committee Topical Group Meeting, Zulich, Germany. Pasted from burningplasma.org. In relation to investigation of a transient energetic charge exchange flux enhancement, Spike on Tell observed in neutral beam heated H mode discharges in the National Spherical Tours experiment. Maybe it means you two need to compare your data. Okay, so that's the end of that one, and we'll go on to the next video.